Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. We've been kind of getting hit or miss with some some weather this morning. You can see it's, a, well maybe it doesn't show it, but it's a little dreary out. We're pretty close to getting this uh, this roof system trust and what that means is our steel is getting delivered tomorrow morning first thing and God willing our goal is to get some steel up on this roof and that's really what you know helps strengthen the diaphragm of a post frame and really just holds together that skeleton which is the frame uh, but the problem is this is a little bit muddy it is drying up but it's a very tacky mud which means I'm a little bit leery of running the scissor lift down there. It's gonna start making a mess, but we really don't have a choice. You go look at the other side, it's even worse. We got a stinking pond out here in this field. You can see here, but it is also settling due to the backfill. So you can kind of see out here the line where the wall was dug and then they put it back and it's kind of settling in. So if it dries up, I'll take my skid loader out there and uh, try to flatten it off, pack it in so that we can run the scissor lift so that we can put the roof up on this side. I don't know, it's uh, definitely gonna be a little bit of a struggle but you guys have seen us get through some probably worse situations so I'm not too worried. The biggest thing right now is we're gonna try to get these last two trusses up here. That's gonna complete our last full bay and it is gonna be tricky once again because we've gotta come in this little opening over here and weave that truss in, which uh, you'll see us hopefully do. And then we'll work on this end truss, which is gonna be a little bit of a unique detail, which I'll take you through as well. We're not gonna do that the traditional way of putting a truss out on the end. I'm ready to get to work, get myself warmed up so that, uh, well, so that I don't feel so cold because it is a little bit, bit cold. I might even put some gloves and a, and a stocking cap on. Let's lift some trusses. Just gotten this first truss on the last bay but now because we're so close to this building we kind of realize that we're not going to be able to maneuver the skid loader the same way so we're going to do a little bit of uh, I guess extra work we're going to try to bring the truss in like we just did but then I'm going to have to somehow get around it and lift it up from the back side you know if I had my telehandler you think the telehandler would have worked I think that would have even been a stretch I don't know I think you would have been able to go up maybe up and yeah maybe I think the telehandler probably would have been better because I could have sat out here and probably reached up over the garage. That's just one more piece of machinery on site and we don't have that much room. I guess uh, here goes nothing. See, I knew we could do it. You guys did too. Greg knew. Everybody knew we were going to get it done. We just, we just had to be a little bit creative and maneuver the machine in here. Um, man, look at that. That is just awesome. I really do, really do love that combination right there. You guys have heard me talk about it a million times, but that Kubota 
with that teleboom is mint. Now, if I could get one of those on my SkyTrack, on my telehandler that already reaches out 42 foot, and I could get like an additional, I don't know, I think that's about probably 20 foot, that would be killer. So uh, Cheyenne, if you guys are listening, if you're watching, why don't you guys make one of those for a uh, SkyTrack or a telehandler, that would be awesome. Uh, so now that we've got that truss up, we've already ran our purlins up there just temporarily. We just set them up there because we can't get our lift, the big one, along this side. We can only use the MRT now to go in between the trusses. We'll go up there and do that. I'll probably have to get some fall protection on and we'll climb up that truss, try to be as safe as possible. And then two guys can work out of the basket and I'll have to probably climb up and do the connection detail. So um, no big deal, it's not too bad. That's how we used to do everything before we tried to be safe on everything, you know? All wanna go home to our families, right? Truthfully, I don't mind this. It doesn't slow me down really any, you know? I mean, I probably should have two if I wanted to be legit. legit. Man, if I fell, I'd never live it down. I'd probably have a heart attack point to the ground. The cause of death wouldn't be through the ball. It's the heart attack. So now that we have that last truss up, you know, the intermediate truss, we've got to get this end truss up, but we've got to first get these corner columns on. And after we kind of thought about it, we already made them up and we made them to go like a standard corner for us, which is the same, uh, the same direction as our sidewall columns. But since we're going to be putting a truss on the end on the inside of the column, we got to maintain that seven and a quarter dimension that our end columns are all going to have. And what I mean by that, here's a good representation. This jam column is going this way. Corner columns are usually opposite that, so they're going the same as our sidewall columns. Well, we made it up to go on the sidewall, but we're gonna rotate it because our truss is actually gonna sit on this side, and then we're just gonna do some framing on the outside so that all of our steel and stuff lines up. Unfortunately, we use the Fasco Jumbo Nailer, and those nails do not pull. I've probably shown that a couple times. They have like a Diamond Bright technology on them, and the holding power is unreal. So what we're gonna have to do is take the saws off, try to get this spread open a little bit, and then we'll have to slice those nails because they don't pull out. All you're gonna do is pull the heads through the wood. Now the nice thing is this right here, this is where our truss is gonna sit. So when we stand it up, this is gonna be in the inside. This is gonna define our side wall and then our truss is gonna sit right here. A lot of people always ask, why do you guys do so much hand nailing and then use the nail gun and then do screws. Honestly, it just depends on the job. We learned that using a standard nail gun, like a, our Hitachi cordless, that does not put nails in with enough holding power that if there's flex in this column, either during installation or whatever, it'll actually just pull them right out. These 20 penny ring shanks, they don't go nearly, or they don't, they don't come out nearly as easy as a gun nail. Now we could get the jumbo nailer out, but that's just a lot of work. Uh, to basically get the same thing. So we're not, if we're doing a lot of framing, we'll pull it out. Here's all I wanna say. We're gonna get real close. You just stay away from me. No. Okay, but I need to at least be in a balanced okay. position. Get, get yourself in a balanced position. Okay, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ready? do the best I can, man. Ready? One, two, three. Holy crap. Good thing I had it. Hey, good job. No, I had it. No, man, if it wasn't for me, it's all me. Over. Personally, I feel like every time I lift one of these corner columns, I just did something stupid. But also every time I lift it, I feel like I'm still 25. Like you, Greg. When you turn 26, you wanna celebrate for another successful year. Another year I'm alive. Another year I made it. Another year I'm not a father. Greg, there's gonna be some kids that'll be darn lucky to have you as their dad. Yeah. Someday. 
good? So because this truss, this end truss is a single ply, um, we can't actually hang that from a center pick point like we have been doing with the double ply trusses. Otherwise what's gonna wanna do is the ends are gonna wanna come together and it's gonna basically break in half. So by putting that stiffening board in, that helps us and allows us to do the center pick, which I don't even know if it would work with the telehandler and a set of straps. At some point you just have to put a spreader of some sort or a stiffener board so it doesn't collapse. So 